Hi, guy. Right. Oh, mate. How are we looking? I'm not so bad. Yourself? Steady away, mate. Good. Steady okay. away. So you've been to Shrewsbury? I have. You've seen my Yeah, You've lovely. seen how we make the oil? Lovely, mate. Yeah. So now we're looking at how oil is used. So you can see today we're in a commercial vehicle workshop. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be looking at lubricants for commercial vehicles. And we're going to kick off with engine oils. All right, boy. Okay, so obviously that's the, the throbbing heart of the, of, of the commercial vehicle. Is that what you're calling it? Absolutely. And obviously there's been a lot of changes over recent years. And where we are now is Euro 6 compliance. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the vehicle behind has got a Euro 6 compliant engine in there. So there's, there's lots of things you all got to do to, to, to keep that Euro 6 compliant engine running and moving. Um, and the, of course the big changes and the big, the, big, the big differences compared to previous kind of generations of engines is all the after treatment devices, mm -hmm. which you'll be familiar with. with yeah, the, yeah, the diesel yeah, particular yeah. filters, the, the AdBlue catalysts. It's about making sure that you've got the correct chemistry in the lubricant that doesn't affect the performance of those after treatment devices. Yeah, okay. Um, so when, when, you, when you, you lubricate the top part of the engine, okay, so well, the combustion well, chamber... When, when I first started coming out your 5 your 6 it was called low saps oil. What saps, mate? That's sulfated ash, phosphorus and sulfur. You know yourself. <laughs> so sulfated ash is, is what you get when you incinerate some of that chemistry in the combustion okay. chamber. Yeah, yeah. Phosphorus and sulfur are associated with certain chemistries that we use, things like anti-air chemistry, that kind of thing. Right. Well, they can find their way down with the exhaust gases and I say the ash can, can block the diesel particulate filters, the sulfur can poison the catalyst. So it's getting the chemistry right, pitched yep. right. So if you've got too much chemistry, okay, the wrong kind of chemistry in there, you can block the diesel particulate filter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you've got um, the wrong kind of chemistry in there, you can poison the ABLU catalyst. So this, this is a big problem. So you've got to pitch it. Now low saps means that the, the chemistry is pitched at a level which Gives you the, the maximum life out of your diesel particular filter. Mm -hmm. The maximum life out of what your. What are we saying that? What are we talking? Life. Well, it will depend on the manufacturer. It depends on the size of the oh, unit. Six hundred, seven hundred thousand. Whenever they, they four hundred thousand. Yeah, and normally it's when it becomes irreversibly blocked. That okay. that'll be that can oh, be. Oh, I, I thought like the last scan of them as, as as a, a serviceable unit you know i think you may change i think they tell us like four hundred fifty thousand, but i think we can get them to six hundred thousand. yeah i mean if I you've got the chemistry like right yeah if you've got the chemistry right you can Every, get everything the all the life. trucks i work Absolutely. on everything has morris in it yeah well, that's really kind thank you very much no no because it, it's the right stuff but they you. will look after those after treatment because right? you want because they're not cheap are they as you know but if you choose incorrect lubricants that lifetime will be greatly reduced so that, okay. that that's an, that's an issue so Getting the right chemistry, getting the low saps products, as you say. So okay, we're okay. controlling these levels of chemistry mm. to make sure everything's right, okay. squeaky clean. So, so that's, what, that's what all the word was when it first started coming out, Euro 5, you need this low saps. Low saps, yeah. And, and then, but that's still the case now. It's still the case and going forward. So I mean, what, that doesn't I get what any, Scania is it? What are they called? Is the LDF4? So is LDF there Scania compliant? We've now got LDF5 as well. Is that that's right? That's the latest generation, yeah. LDF5, and what's yeah. that? So that's a 5W20. 520, that's yeah. light. What's that so all for? Um, efficiency, efficiency yeah. right? CO two reduction. So yeah, so, so the keep, other, keep the friction down. Exactly. So the big drive now, um, and it has been for a while with Euro six compliance, is is getting the thinner rules in there. So five W thirty now is pretty commonplace. Yeah, most, yeah, yeah, most yeah. Most manufacturers now OEMs will be taking five W thirties. Um, there are there are other manufacturers other than Scania which are on five W twenty. They're down at sort of not W twenties or V for example. But does that still have the same protection though as like the old ten forties? The actual metallurgy and, and materials used in the engine has got to, got to sort of like complement it. So you couldn't put a 5W20 into an older generation engine because there would not be enough beef in it for that, that older style engine. So you, Go on, you, you've got to say, beef in what yeah, sense? Because so, so surely like the, the, the later on that the technology gets, so you know, like the Euro 6 mm. at the start in 16 compared to Euro 6 now, we're talking higher cylinder pressures, we want more boost, yeah, more cylinder pressure. So obviously yeah. that's putting the oil under more stress. Absolutely, so so yeah. a later end, so why, so obviously the later oils, like mm. the 520s, would be designed to deal with more stress Absolutely, than the earlier yeah. oils. Which are relying on, on things like polymers, so polymers, polymer materials. Go on. Uh, in, the, in the formulation. So you know, the oil itself, the base oil itself is pretty good. It'll take quite a lot of pressure. Yeah. But if that starts to break down, certainly say bearing faces, for example, mm -hmm. Um, or it could be d down the liner, the, the, the tips of the compression rings and the liner. That starts to break down. You need something a little bit stronger than just an oil film. So we use polymers to strengthen the actual oil film itself. So you right, get protection okay. that way. Those um, polymers come from where? 
So polymers, they are basic. They, they are. Um, you, you still come from crude oil. You still crack them off crude oil. So, so the actual building blocks come come from that from from a refinery. Okay. And those building blocks are polymerized, a bit like Lego blocks. Right. You know, you, you add them together and you, you form these long chains of of predictable molecules that you you introduce into the oil formulation uh, okay. in order to give it additional strength and performance. Okay. Um, okay. But you're right. I mean, there's so many changes. Um, I mean, the other thing, the other thing that these, these, these newer engines suffer with is, is higher temperatures. Yeah. And so the oil's got to deal with higher temperatures as well. So oxidation can be a big killer for a lubricant. So an oxidation, basically, you, you're getting the... What we call an oxidation. So that's when the oil starts to, to thicken up and you start to, it starts to get, um, it increases in viscosity. When we get contamination in there. Yeah, well, just the heat itself. Um, if you've ever seen an old cooking, you know, an old frying oh, pan. So just applying heat to oil without putting oh, contamination yeah. in there. Can thicken or will th not yeah. can will thicken the oil. Course, I didn't know that. And bear in mind, you know, the, the long oil drain intervals some of these vehicles could be experiencing. You know, under, yeah, but there was long oil drain. I mean, at the start of Euro Five, it was sort of hundred thousand kilometres. Absolutely. But then when Euro Six came in, they dropped it down to like sixty thousand kilometres. Yeah. Now, if that, but now, now we do them even more more regular than that. But now they're pushing them back up again. Go on to yeah, what? So what are you seeing again? Euro so Six. We're, now? we're seeing people talk about two hundred thousand kilometres. Two hundred thousand. Absolutely. Oh, I'm that's, saying that's that with a talking shite. Two hundred thousand kilometres. Yeah. Engine oil. Yeah, I well, mean, that's 100, not sensible, 150, is it? 150 cents, normal, 150,000 kilometres, and they're talking beyond that. Do you know what, I, you know what I'm saying? I apply to that. Pennywise pound four. I know, yeah, I'm on, I want a t shirt with oil. Change the oil, man. Change the but, oil. But the oil has got to last that long. So if people are, are dealing with these extended oil drain intervals, uh, they've got to make sure that the oil is going to do that. So we have to I suppose you've got to meet the specifications Absolutely. from the, the manufacturer. Yeah. Okay. So that oil has got to make sure that all the after treatment devices, uh, you know, keeping everything nice and clean, keeping from bearings from wearing out, giving you good compression, dealing with all these higher pressures. Um, it's going to last. It's going to help that engine last for that period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing we're seeing as well is the, um, they're, they're concentrating more on the effects of, of soot, because soot is quite an abrasive material. If you get soot into an oil, you're basically forming a nice grinding paste, yeah. which can be an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So these newer generation engines, as, as they've kind of reduced all the tolerances, so the, the machining tolerances have improved, the clearances are, are reduced. Mm -hmm. So soot can have more of an effect then, because if you've got tighter clearance and you've got soot trying to get through there, then obviously you, that can be an abrasive wear element. But if the tolerances are a lot tighter now, would you be have less, you'd have less chance of getting soot it's causing reduced. oil contamination. It's a reduced amount, but you're still getting some in there. You can't help. Right, okay. And how do you mine. deal? How do? What sort of additives do you have to put so, in to so, deal with soot in the oil? So literally, they're called anti-wear additives. Okay. So, so they, they they form a sacrificial chemical layer on, on the surfaces of the metals. So rather than metal to metal wearing out, you're then basically uh, you're just wear, you're sacrificially taking the additive off the surface, right, okay. which is replenished. Okay. Which is why additives de deplete over a period of time. You know, which is why there is a service interval because beyond that then the additive life will have been reduced and de depleted. So it's not getting the correct levels of protection anymore. Okay. But, so but so say, say we've got, say the, the, the latest um, LDF5 yeah. Scania oil is what, 520? 5W20, right? yeah. After, say, 150,000 kilometres, what viscosity is it then? It, would, it should be 5W20. Honestly? Absolutely. That's what exactly what it should be doing. And that, that's... Is that's, that right? That's After 150,000 yeah. kilometres. So, despite what the oil, oil drain interval is, the service interval, that oil goes in. It's from the day same one, viscosity. It's the same when it comes out the other end. Because otherwise, it can't offer the same levels of protection. No, 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 no. So, it has to have that robustness built into it. So, so when, when, we're, when we're formulating these products uh, at Morris, we're making sure that the, these oil formulations you know, consistently perform from day one to the, the day it comes out yeah, the, the service yeah, interval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's, there's, there's more than one type of engine oil, of course. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the chemistry. So, so at, at Morris Lubricants, we have a range called Versimax, yeah. which covers a, a, a wide range of, of engine technologies and, and emissions compliance. Um, so obviously, b b before Euro 6 came out, there's Euro 5 and Euro 4, Euro 3, etc. So, so we have Versimax products which are suited to the, the older technology vehicles. Go on. Uh, all the way up to the, the sort of Scania requirement, which is our latest Versimax, our HD18 5W20, which is specifically for Scanias and MAN engines. But it's, you still call it Versimax? Versimax is, yeah, it's the family name. Right. Know, it's the family name but, for well, all well, of because it's versatile. Yeah, it's, it's versatile right. so and the it's 020, giving you maximum you can, protection. You, yeah. can use, you can use that in other... 
No, this, this oh. is the thing. So this new, these new generation oils, these 5W20s, they're not backward compatible. So these technologies are designed around these new engine architectures that we're seeing now, but there's no backward compatibility. If you put that 5W20 into an older technology engine requiring even a 5W30 or a 10W40, you will prematurely wear it out. It's not backward right? Absolutely. Because you're going for the, the maximum in fuel efficiency with these low viscosity grades, the engine architecture is designed around coping with that. So the older technology engines, Holy moly. which need the thicker oil that's films. A, that's a muck about, boy. Well, well, yeah. So when our new Scanias turn up at the start of next year, they've got the new type engine. Yes. So we're going to have to do two types of oil then. Absolutely, yeah. So we can't put the new type oil in the older type engine. You can't, engine. yeah. And this, this is an important. Even though it's only a year's yeah, worth of difference. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good cautionary note, really, for, for, for end users that these new generation engines require something specific. And backward compatibility. My boss won't like that. Yeah, and I know it, it increases inventories, unfortunately. Hey, okay. But of course, it's all that or damage older engines, and this this is this is the, the you know this is the consideration. So so the Versimax range covers everything right up to these later technology engine oils, okay. um, and then we have the kind of mixed fleet approach. So obviously, a lot of a lot of fleets may not just be one particular brand. There could be a whole different host of OEMs, you know, Volvo, Scania's, DAFs, you name it. So. So we have Versimax products which will cope with, with mixed fleet products. Um, and then, as I say, we have the, the, the kind of the, the older technology uh, Versimaxes for the, the, the sort of pre-DPF kind of systems. Oh, old school. Yeah, old school, yeah. yeah. yeah Even yeah, some yeah. pre-AdBlue as well, is you know, which has right? been around, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, Your old 1040 days. Oh, I mean, 15, 40, 2050s. Oh, we even do a 2050, 2050s. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's a week or two it ago. It is, yeah. <laughs> but bear in mind, you know, we, we supply to you know, the rest of the world as well. So although, obviously, the UK is our, our, yeah. our, our, our back garden, um, yeah, we're, like we're global exporters. to the bloody yeah. Middle East. Yeah. The numbers you've sent to the Middle East. So there's a lot of older technology units d dotted around even the in middle, Even in the Middle East. Oh, yeah, that be absolutely. Old yeah. knackers. They, they don't, they don't knackers, throw them away, yeah. Yeah. Knackers, yeah. Right. So, oh, so God. yeah, so it's a broad range of products. So Versimax covers a whole family of different, I would say, technologies from, from those older, you know, sort of Euro 1 and pre-Euro 1 combined yeah, engines yeah, yeah, yeah. up to Euro 6. But of course, Euro 7 is coming. So that will be the content of our next episode. So we'll be talking about Euro 7 Give some more learning. and the implications of that. Good man. Okay. So uh, if you'd like to see any more content like this or any more videos with Guy, visit the Morris Lubricants website or our YouTube channel.